This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to five things I love about Gran Turismo 7. With the recent 1.35 patch, I've noticed that there's a general overarching negativity within Gran Turismo's community, if not just the racing game community as a whole, where we've had a lot of, you know, either bad patches or really uneventful patches, or, you know, we look at Need for Speed Unbound and we go, why are we even still playing this game? And instead of sitting here and adding to the negativity about, you know, what things that I hate about Gran Turismo and this, that, the other thing, I wanted to take a step back and shed some light on the positive things that Polyphony Digital has done to create, in my mind, one of the best racing games I've honestly ever played. So without further ado, number one. So when you open Gran Turismo 7 for the first time, I imagine all of you had a similar experience to what I felt, which was, oh my god, this game is beautiful. So when I first picked up this game, I had the PlayStation 4 version, and then within a year or so, I was able to pick up the PlayStation 5 version. And the thing that struck me was the fact that there's this incredible level of detail, and it's a cross-gen game. You know, the fact that we're going into the fourth or whatnot year of this current console generation, and we're finally getting these console exclusive games versus you know that weird kind of cross-gen where you have to optimize the game for playstation 4 and then worry about you know playstation 4 pro and playstation 5 the fact of it that gran turismo 7 works beautifully on 4 for slim for pro and 5 is just mind-boggling to me because you have these amazing graphics of these incredibly detailed cars which you can definitely tell Plifney had spent hours hours months maybe even years mulling over these finite details on each and every one of these 474 cars currently is just staggering and you can definitely tell that there are game studios recently that, you know, they do a half ass job 10 years ago and they're still reusing assets. And the fact that Polyphony says, no, 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 no. We want to recreate every single car every single time we redo a game because we want to get the highest fidelity we can out of these vehicles and environments. And yeah, the environments in this game are, I, I'm at a loss of words. They are beyond beautiful. And yes, some people will say that the tracks are fairly limited, but when you compare it to the upcoming Forza Motorsport where they only have 20 tracks or thereabouts, I am not complaining about the amount of tracks we have in Gran Turismo 7 at all. Furthermore, when it comes to video games, you can have games that look beautiful, but there are a lot of games, especially in 2023, that have been released that just simply don't have a level of polish. And what I mean by level of polish is that there are bugs everywhere. So there are like, you know, cars glitching in and out of the world. There, you know, you have an accident and the car gets wedged into the ground. You have an accident and the car gets wedged into the wall. None of that happens in Gran Turismo 7. And honest, honestly, in the 610 or so hours of this game that I played, I don't think I've actually encountered a bug of that flavor or anything like that. I think there might have been some minute graphical bugs every now and again that I've witnessed, but there hasn't been anything that is like completely destroyed the the gameplay experience at all so props to polyphony like holy crap i can't imagine the the amount of hours of qa testing that you guys went through to be able to get to this level of polish and it's just i don't know if i've ever played a racing game that is this 
all-encompassing. That's all of this beautiful graphics and beautiful, just everything, and it's perfect. And I don't know if I've ever played a game so complete. And I am to this day still astounded and still trying to come up with words to describe it because it is just impeccable. When it comes to racing games, the biggest make or break factor is probably the physics. It's how well it plays because you can have games that are completely arcade that are like Mario Kart where you every turn is a drift and it's just supposed to be fun but the thing about it is then it's not rewarding and what the rewarding is there are you know like racing car drivers they want to be able to find the best line through every corner through every course to the point that they want to take off not tenths but hundreds if not even thousands of seconds and these arcade games just don't do it for them, understandably. But on the other side of the spectrum is if you create something that is so simulation heavy that has so many adjustable factors that you need to have a professional sim racing rig to be able to play it, then the standard individual does not enjoy it. So I think Polyphony Digital, in my mind, has done a very good job about bridging that kind of gap where it rewards individuals that are looking for those minute split seconds off their lap times to those who are just picking it up for the first time. And I'll be honest, I am kind of a casual gamer. I'm going to be honest in saying that I am a casual gamer. I'm sorry. That's just how I am. I like playing a lot of different games, and I like enjoying them at a surface level. So Gran Turismo 7 was a unique experience for me where it was one of these few games that I actually started to dive deep into it and to really enjoy the rewards of practicing and doing it again and again and again and again and again to finally get those gold medals, whether it be in the missions or in the license tests or in the time trials or the online time trials or the circuit experiences why are there five different time trials in the same game and all different menus but like i was saying polyphony digital in my mind did a very good job about making a game that is both fun on controller but then even more exciting with a purpose-built racing simulator and the the learning curve in my mind is still pretty steep and to be able to start this game you're not an individual that is like seriously casual like an individual that picks up the most recent call of duties or whatnot and plays them for like a couple of hours for the casual gamers grand Christmas stuff is obviously not for you so for whatever reason i don't know how i managed to bridge that gap and just fall head first into this and the physics about it are i i haven't actually raced an actual racing car so i don't know how realistic they are but with the level of tire wear dealing with fuel management dealing with brake bias dealing with traction control all of that on top of feeling like the the rubbering in of racing courses and dealing with you know, the loss of grip when you deal with uh, the rain coming out, but then you're dealing with, you know, getting the grip back when the track is drying. All of that is unique. And I, it was, this is the first game that I've really felt that because the last quote unquote simulation game that I played was Forza Motorsport 7. And that was still really arcadey in my mind. So Gran Turismo 7 much like the graphics and the polish that they've put into it previously i feel like that the physics have had an incredible impact on the game as a whole and the game again like i said is just spectacular and i think the phys physics side of it is just 
like i'm still going to be playing this game for hundreds of hours more trying to really dial in my my driving ability and it's obvious that i've come a long way but man do i have a long way to go and i find that incredibly rewarding So this next one on the list kind of seems like a gimme. This one seems kind of obvious. We're talking about a car game. So yes, we're going to like the cars that are in the game. Duh. But the thing that I want to touch on here is that when you look at all sorts of other racing games, you kind of get the same kind of feeling about what the car list is they're all mainly european or should i say western a lot of american muscle cars and a lot of italian supercars and a couple of compact japanese cars and maybe a couple of japanese supercars and that's really the nuts and bolts of it gran turismo in my mind i've always enjoyed this Yes, I played a little bit of Gran Turismo 2. I played a little bit more Gran Turismo 4, but now I've played a ton of Gran Turismo 7. I've always enjoyed the Gran Turismo series because it touches on the Japanese car culture. And it's incredibly rich and it's incredibly unique. And there's a lot of really unique perspectives that the Japanese culture has to create these wild and odd machines that we would never even think of you know coming from like a western perspective and furthermore the thing that i've always enjoyed too is that the japanese racing history legacy like i said is very rich and we don't ever hear about it because we're always hearing about ferrari or hearing about ford or hearing about Lamborghini and it's just like who cares like you, you hear about it so often that you kind of like know the stories inside and out and you kind of just get tired of hearing the same story so when you hear the stories about what went on with the Mazda 787B when you hear about the stories of how the Nissan GTR the R33 just dominated Japanese racing leagues it's it's really unique and it's incredibly refreshing. So I will, I love the fact that there are so many different car brands in it from the Japanese culture. Like who thinks of a racing game that puts Suzuki in it? And nowadays, you know, it almost was kind of odd to have Toyota in a racing game. But if you look at the Toyota car list, it's got like 35 cars in it. And Need for Speed Unbound struggles to even get one in it. So the fact that we have such a vast history of these cars at our disposal. And the thing that I actually do enjoy about this game is that we get to learn about this history. And I do find that incredibly fascinating. So theme and direction. What do I mean by theme and direction? So if you look at... Gran Turismo 1 through 4, it kind of follows Kazunori Yamauchi's story as to really exploring car culture as a whole, where back in the mid-90s, it was only like a limited amount of Japanese cars within that culture. And then it started to become, you know, the more the games grew and the brand grew, it became more all-encompassing and started, you know, becoming more and more and more. And all throughout this, it was the idea of the world's most purpose-built racing simulator. Gran Turismo 5 gets a little bit weird where there, we can kind of sense a change in direction of what the Gran Turismo kind of brand is. And this follows the journey, I think, as a whole... Kazunori Yamauchi's story where by this point in Gran Turismo 5 he really starts exploring being a race car driver himself so dealing with more of the motorsports side of things instead of just being a purpose-built racing simulator 
he goes back to the roots of like, okay, what is it like to actually drive a car in a motorsport environment? So Gran Turismo 5, 6, and Sport really go from this abstract game developer, what I believe car culture is like, into this change in direction of this is what motorsports is. And now that Kazunura Yamauchi is reaching his mid 50s and is probably thinking about retirement eventually and he's got this big legacy of Gran Turismo behind him, he's taken a step back from motorsports itself and is probably taken a more reflective outlook on life. And a lot of individuals, I understand, are incredibly upset with the direction that the single player quote unquote story mode goes through. And in some cases, I was a little bit confused too, because playing Gran Turismo 2 and Gran Turismo 4, you kind of have this understanding if you pick up like a garbage car and you go through the Sunday Cups and you upgrade it, and then eventually you can buy another car and sell off the old one and upgrade that one and start collecting cars from there. Gran Turismo 7, in my mind, after kind of mulling on this idea for a while is almost as if this is a story of Kesunuri Yamuchi taking you through an art gallery where he is the curator and kind of going through and leading you through this is the history behind these select cars that I have chosen for this gallery. It's very weird to have this kind of mindset in a racing game. But like I was saying, the entire Gran Turismo series has followed his life trajectory. So now that we're in Gran Turismo 7, we've got 25 years of Gran Turismo. We're now reaching a very mature, very reflective, very refined opinion on cars versus going back and getting to the nitty and the gritty and, and trying to deal with all this motorsports and this, that, the other thing. It's, it's taking a step back and looking at cars as art. Now, longtime fans of the series might be off put by this, might be disgusted that this is the direction that the game went in. But keep in mind, this game is following Kaz's vision. He is the sole individual kind of guiding this game direction and has been since day one. So as he changes, his vision and his outlook on cars also change. So the fact that we're not getting an exact replica of the previous game, but only just slightly better or slightly bigger or slightly more, I actually do enjoy this change in theme and direction. Where as someone coming back to the Gran Turismo series after missing the PlayStation 3 and almost PlayStation 4 generation entirely, having this refined look on cars as a whole now that I'm entering almost my early 30s, is really weirdly nice because all sorts of games are about, you know, just go fast and press the NOS button and drift around this corner and oh my God, it, it, and it's like almost childish. So to have a game that you can kind of step back and just enjoy it, smell the coffee, enjoy learning about these cars and their respective histories. It is, in my mind, a really nice change of direction. Would I expect Gran Turismo 8 to follow this same direction? No, because we already have this. We already have this game based on like an art gallery. So to have Gran Turismo 8 be a copy of that no, I'm, I wouldn't be interested in buying that, especially with the amount of grinding I did to get all the cars in this game. It took a lot of freaking time because Kaz wanted us to feel 
how much work and effort it is to get these incredibly valuable cars. And again, that it was a choice. But the other interesting thing too that I want to briefly touch on as well when it comes to this kind of theme and direction is that all throughout this journey, I've actually really appreciated Sony's lack of input almost. I know that behind the scenes, they were probably very involved, but it seems like that they have a different outlook when it comes to making money through microtransactions and whatnot. Like, yes, they're obviously still there. They are definitely still involved in the game and you can still buy credits and whatnot. And if you are like, if you have rich parents and they give you your, give you their credit card and they don't care how much money you spend, yeah, you can spend seven grand or whatever it is and buy all of the cars overnight, basically. And that's a thing you can do, I guess. But I've enjoyed Sony's involvement where it's not like, well, you also have to do microtransactions on, you have to get this separate set of currency and you can only buy certain parts or liveries or car parts or cars themselves with this other you know type of currency that puts everything behind a separate paywall i've actually really enjoyed how you can from start to finish get everything in this game without spending money it takes a lot of time and effort but you can do it so I appreciate that. It's a nice change of pace from what all these other companies are doing where they just, you can tell that they're trying to milk the user of all sorts of their cash before they expect another 70 bucks next year, you know? So all in all, I don't know if that whole idea is Kazunori Yamauchi's personal preference as, as his idea of saying to Sony, no, we don't need those microtransactions. We don't need a predatory kind of system against our players. Or if it's like Sony as a company culture that is just less worried about milking the user for all of their money and they're okay with taking the time to get that level of polish out. Or if it's just something else that I'm not aware of. But whatever the case is, I appreciate the choices that were made to make the experience less predatory and this might be kind of my own opinion because i feel other people might say differently because of the level of grinding the amount of grinding that you have to do but you know i digress this is an opinion piece if i may and then finally the community itself and this one has been honestly kind of the most difficult one for me to mull over but the idea is just by browsing subreddit on a daily basis, the Gran Turismo subreddit, I've been finding myself more and more involved with the Gran Turismo subreddit the more that I go on. And yes, there are those daily posts of look at this dickhead that I played against in Gran Turismo Online who just rammed into me and this, that, the other thing. Yeah, they're always going to be there. And yes, there's always going to be people complaining about this, that, the other thing. There's always going to be people yelling about how they're questioning why they have a minute penalty for rules about changing tires in online races, which always makes me laugh because every week it's a new person. <laughs> it's just like, does anybody read the rules anymore? No. But all in all, the community has been very helpful, has been very knowledgeable. A lot of them have, you know, showed their passions about how much they've enjoyed the game and, and shared their builds on, you know, what kind of cars they found are the fastest around certain tracks. And there have been a lot of posts about people trying out scapes with, you know, the different photography and the different cars and and just these absolutely lifelike photos that are just incredible. And every time I go back to the Need for Speed subreddit, it's just more and more people just whining and complaining and wanting to 
remastered version of Most Wanted 05, and it's like, guys, you can just play it. It's called an emulator. Just stop yelling about it. Like, we get it. So, yeah, Gran Turismo subreddit and Gran Turismo community. You're always going to find those people that are always angry about something. But overall, I can tell that this community as a whole is very appreciative, very knowledgeable, and is very passionate for this game that has gone on for 25 years now. There are not a lot of companies remaining out there that have either continued to have that same identity or continued to have that same heritage in respect to the previous ones that have come before them. You know, and that's why you find so unique and so cool about Gran Turismo is that there are probably people that have been playing since Gran Turismo 1 when they talked about, you know, being in their 20s when that came out and on the PlayStation 1. So now they're probably at a similar age to Kazunori Yamauchi and they're almost like the old guard, which is kind of cool, you know. So when it comes to Gran Turismo, that's the thing that I like the most about it is the fact that it has maintained its true identity throughout all these years where when you pick up the game you know what you're going to get because you've got the missions you've got the license tests you've got you know the online mode you've got a single player of some flavor but even with all the changes that Gran Turismo 7 made this time around it's still ultimately a Gran Turismo game and I think that's been the thing that's tied everything together is Kazunori Yamauchi being at the helm this entire time. So as, you know, we're working towards the next game, whatever that may be, that's going to be the interesting thing in my mind because I know Kaz isn't going to be here forever, and I know that he'll probably be looking at wanting to retire soon, maybe. So I'm interested to see what kind of happens here because we've taken a step in a very different direction than usual and I'm just kind of curious where we go from here if the next game is something by a completely different person or if it goes further down this weird kind of art gallery road or we go back to the basics where it's just a pure driving simulator Thank you for watching this content. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for new channel updates. Of course, I release brand new racing related video gaming videos every Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time. So stay tuned for next week where I release something else related to racing games. I'll let you know what I think of by that point, but. Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye-bye.